Indiana CDL has mat practice test. Question 1. Your engine runs a pump when you are delivering compressed gas. After finishing the delivery, when should you turn off the engine? A. Turn it off after unhooking the hoses. B. Turn it off before unhooking the hoses. C. Turn it off on arrival, use other power to run the pump. D. Leave it on the entire time. Answer B. Keeping your engine on while you pump a load of compressed gas adds extra risk. As soon as the delivery is completed, turn off the engine before you unhook any hoses. Question 2. What action should you take if you discover your hazardous materials shipment leaking at a rest stop but there is no phone available? A. Send someone for help with all the necessary information. B. Keep driving slowly and cautiously until you reach a phone. C. Keep driving for help as quickly as possible. D. Leave your truck parked with its emergency lights on and walk for help. Answer A. Cleaning up a spill, a huge contamination in particular, would be very expensive. Therefore, if you notice a leak, stop as soon as you possibly can and get off the road. Stay with your vehicle because of liability and safety issues and send someone else for help. You will need to send a large amount of vital information, including your location, your direction of travel, the hazard class and ID numbers, your carrier's location, and the cargo's destination. Make sure you write it all down for the person seeking help. Question 3. When shippers package the material, they are trying to a. Make it easy to open and close the packages. B. Make it easy to identify. C. Make it as light as possible. D. Do all of the above. Answer B. The regulations for packages of hazardous materials require shippers to make it easy for drivers, destination personnel and emergency personnel to identify the contents quickly and easily. Question 4. A safe haven is A. The slang term for the last stop at the end of your driving day when you are carrying hazardous materials. B. A place where it is safe to dump hazardous materials. C. A place that has been approved for parking unattended vehicles carrying explosives. D. A place to stay once you have reported your company for illegal activity. Answer C. The term safe haven refers to a place created by local authorities where you can safely leave your truck unattended while it holds explosive materials. This solves a trucking dilemma that has often led drivers to make risky decisions, such as driving through the night so that they could stay with their loads. Question 5. If you are carrying Division 1.2 or 1.3 materials, how far away must you park from the traveled portion of the roadway? A. At least 5 feet. B. At least half a mile. C. At least 10 feet. D. At least 20 feet. Answer A. If you are carrying Division 1.2 or 1.3 materials, never park your vehicle less than 5 feet away from a traveled portion of the road or highway. If you cannot get that far away, it is considered a serious emergency and you should call emergency services. Question 6. Which of the following materials is an acceptable floor liner for moving Division 1.1 or 1.2 materials? A. Stainless steel. B. Carbon steel. C. Non-ferrous metal. D. Any of the above. Answer C. Explosives should not be near anything that could emit sparks. 
The floor liner for moving Division 1.1 or 1.2 materials must be either non-metallic materials or non-ferrous metals. Stainless steel and carbon steel are ferrous metals. Question 7. If you are already carrying 100 pounds of silver cyanide, what precautions must you take if you are given papers at a dock to carry 100 cartons of battery acid? A. Make sure the battery acid is loaded on top of the silver cyanide. B. Make sure the silver cyanide is loaded on top of the battery acid. C. Inform someone and do not load the battery acid. D. Make sure there is plenty of space between the two. Answer C. Silver cyanide and battery acid are on the list of materials that cannot travel together for safety reasons. See the Do Not Load table in the Indiana CDL manual. Silver cyanide is a Division 6.1 material poison. It cannot be loaded with acids because their mixture can release hydrocyanic acid, which is extremely poisonous. Question 8. Where are the two main places where the hazardous material identification number appears? A. On the package and on paperwork at the shipping destination. B. On the package and on paperwork at the shipping point of origin. C. On the shipping papers and on a secret document in the driver's wallet. D. On the shipping papers and on the package. Answer D. The two main places where you must keep the hazardous material identification numbers are on your shipping papers and on the packages, since these are the places that emergency personnel have been trained to check immediately. Question 9. In what location must you keep your shipping papers that describe any hazardous materials? A. In a fireproof pouch under the passenger seat while you are driving. B. In a fireproof pouch under the driver's seat that you can reach while you are driving. C. In a locked glove compartment whenever you are out of the vehicle. D. On the driver's seat whenever you are out of the vehicle. Answer D. Your shipping papers for hazardous materials must be visible and accessible to emergency personnel at all times including when you are out of the vehicle. Therefore, whenever you are away from your vehicle, they must be placed on the driver's seat, within easy reach in case of an emergency. Question 10. You must never smoke or perform any activity involving fire within 25 feet of A. Classes 1, 2, 3, and 4. B. Class 4.2 only. C. Class 1 only. D. Class 5.2 only. Answer A. You should not risk smoking in close proximity to any class of hazardous material, but there are specific rules for the following classes. No smoking within 25 feet of classes 3 and 2.1 flammable materials and gases and no smoking or holding a lighted smoking object such as a cigar or pipe within 25 feet of classes 1, 3, 4, or 4.2 explosives, flammable liquids or solids, or spontaneously combustible materials. Question 11. What is the purpose of a driver placarding his or her vehicle? A. To warn those with children to drive in another lane. B. To give people something interesting to look at while they drive. C. To force other drivers to stay 20 feet away in every direction. D. To communicate risk. Answer D. Placards are signs posted on the outside of the vehicle to warn others about hazardous materials. These signs identify the hazard class of the cargo. Question 12. The Emergency Response Guidebook ERG A. 
contains an index of hazardous material ID numbers which is why you must label things correctly. B. Was created by the U.S. Department of Transportation and is used nationwide. C. Is studied by emergency personnel to help keep the public safe. D. Does all of the above. Answer D. The Emergency Response Guidebook ERG was created by the U.S. Department of Transportation and is used by emergency personnel such as firefighters and paramedics to respond to trucking emergencies. The guidebook is indexed by hazardous material identification number, which is why it is very important that shipping papers be labeled correctly. Question 13. Which of the following are necessary qualifications for non-bulk packaging? A. A water capacity of 454 kg 1,000 pounds or less as a receptacle for a gas. B. A maximum capacity of 450 liters 119 gallons or less as a receptacle for a liquid. C. A maximum net mass of 400 kilograms 882 pounds or less and a maximum capacity of 450 liters 119 gallons or less as a receptacle for a solid. D. All of the above. Answer D. Non-bulk packaging has specific requirements to be used as a receptacle for solids, liquids or gases. To qualify as non-bulk, it must satisfy the following, 450 liters 119 gallons or less for liquids, 400 kilograms 882 pounds or less and 450 liters 119 gallons or less for solids, and 454 kilograms 1000 pounds or less for gases. Question 14. A placarded vehicle must carry a fire extinguisher with a minimum rating of A. 5 BC B. 10 of B C. 10 BC D. 5 of B Answer C. All placarded vehicles are required to have a fire extinguisher with a minimum O rating of 10 BC. That is, it must be able to extinguish a 10-square-foot Class B fire which includes almost all flammable liquids and must be electrically non-conductive hence its C rating. Question 15, do you need to stop before a railroad crossing if you are hauling 100 pounds of Division 4.3 materials? A. Yes. B. Number. C. Yes but only if the arm is down telling vehicles to stop. D. It is impossible to tell without more information. Answer A. If your vehicle is placarded, you must stop 15 to 50 feet from the nearest rail at a railroad crossing. After you have done this, proceed once you are sure that no train is approaching and do not shift while you are on the tracks. Question 16. Cargo tanks are A. Filled while they are off your vehicle, then attached for transportation. B. Bulk packaging temporarily attached to your vehicle. C. Only made in one size. D. Bulk packaging permanently attached to your vehicle. Answer D. Cargo tanks are tanks that are permanently attached to a commercial vehicle. There are many different styles for transporting a variety of different materials. Question 17. What are the major differences between cargo tanks and portable tanks? A. Portable tanks must show the owner or lessee's name on them. B. Cargo tanks are permanently attached to vehicles. Portable tanks are temporarily attached. C. Cargo tanks are filled while on the vehicle. Portable tanks can be filled either on or off the vehicle. D. All of the above are major differences.
Answer D. The major differences between cargo tanks and portable tanks are about the permanence of cargo tanks. Since cargo tanks are permanently attached to commercial vehicles, they are filled while they are on the vehicles and they do not need to display the owner's name separately. A portable tank can be filled either on the vehicle or off the vehicle and then attached, and it must display the owner or lessee's name. Question 18. How far away are you allowed to park from a bridge, tunnel, or building if you are carrying Division 1.2 or 1.3 materials? A. At least 500 feet. B. At least 400 feet. C. At least 600 feet. D. At least 300 feet. Answer D. When driving with a load of Division 1.1, 1.2, or 1.3 hazardous materials, which are explosives, you must park at least 300 feet away from any bridge, tunnel, or structure. You must maintain the same distance from any gathering place or open fire. Question 19. How often should you check the tires on a placarded trailer that has dual tires? A. At the start of each trip and every time you stop. B. Once every three hours. C. Once every 100 miles. D. Every time you stop. Answer A. If you have a placarded trailer with dual tires, you should check your tires at the start of each trip and each time that you stop for any reason whether to rest or to refuel. Use a tire pressure gauge to get an accurate reading. Question 20. Which of the following hazard classes uses a transport index to determine how much of it can be loaded on a single vehicle for transport? A. Class 4 live animals. B. Class 1 explosives. C. Class 3 flammable liquids. D. Class 7 Radioactive Materials Answer D. Class 7 Radioactive Materials must be controlled by a transport index that tells each transport company and truck driver how much they can carry. The radiation given off by radioactive materials could contaminate the rest of the load. Question 21. The two other places where the hazardous identification number must appear are A. On the back of the truck and inside the glove compartment. B. On a temporary license plate holder and on the steering wheel. C. On all bulk packaging and on the cargo tanks. D. On the gas tank and on a sticker in the glove compartment. Answer C. In addition to the two main locations for the hazardous material identification number, you must also display it on the cargo tanks and on all bulk packaging. Question 22. Which of the following three hazard classes should not be placed into a temperature-controlled trailer one with a heater, air conditioner unit? A. Classes 1, 3, and 4. B. Classes 1. 2.1, and 3. C. Classes 1, 3, and 6. D. Classes 1, 4, and 5.1. Answer B. The three hazard classes that must be kept in a trailer without automatic heating and cooling are, explosives 1, flammable gases 2.1, and flammable liquids 3, since these are particularly volatile. Question 23, what is a technical name? A. The medical term for hazardous materials used by medical personnel. B. The name of a hazardous material most commonly used on the street. C. The name of a hazardous material most commonly used in the trucking community and accepted as standard. D. 
the name of a hazardous material used in scientific journals and texts, recognized as its chemical and microbiological name. Answer D. The technical name is one used by scientists, which appears in journals, articles, and technical handbooks. It provides a standard terminology for dangerous substances, instead of slang terms that can vary to dangerous effect from region to region. Question 24. Which of the following is not an acceptable type of marking for hazardous materials? A. UN marks. B. Descriptive name in Roman print. C. Identification number. D. Name in italics. Answer D. A hazardous material's proper shipping name should be displayed strictly in Roman print no italics. Acceptable markings include the appropriate descriptive name as well as UN marks, instructions, weight. ID number, specification, cautions, or some combination of these. Question 25. To determine if you need to use placards, which of the following is not something you need to know? A. The amount of a substance or material being shipped. B. The amount of all the hazardous materials of all classes in your vehicle. C. The manufacturing date of the material. D. The hazard class of the substance or material. Answer C. You do not need to know when a product was manufactured or has expired unless your company has an additional responsibility. You do need to know the amount of the hazardous material being shipped, its hazard class and the total amount of all the hazardous materials of all classes that will be carried on your commercial vehicle during your trip. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like and share.